In the last episode of Josh's House, we had an in-depth look at how the landscaping transformed this block and how we're going to be using plants to convert sunlight into food, habitat and shade. Well, in this episode, we'll show you how we're going to use sun to drive the operation of the houses in terms of power, heating and light. outside through these north facing windows I'm just so stoked to see how effective these homes have been in harnessing that warmth from the sun I mean here we are it's still winter in Perth and I'm totally cozy inside it's quite cool outside and there's no air conditioning no artificial heating the design really really works in many respects it's the relationship to the Sun that has driven the design of these houses we capture its warmth in winter and shade ourselves from it to keep cool in summer. And carefully place windows and solar tube skylights provide natural lighting inside. Of course, making the most of the sun for generating our power is a really important part of the overall functioning of our homes and success of this project. And this presented a particularly exciting opportunity for me during construction. Big day today. We're here bright and early on this cold, chilly morning. Uh, for the uh, solar panels are being installed on both houses. So uh, for me, this is a, uh, a big, big moment. We'll be producing our own power. Solar panels are a common choice these days for new and existing homes. And I often hear the question, how did you choose which system to go for? because it's a market that's been swamped with choices. Well, like all things about the Josh's House project, I took the opportunity to do some thorough research, which included going to potential suppliers armed with a list of questions. All right, so to kick things off, I mean, you've seen the design of our homes, yep. we've sent you the plans, yep. we've got a good north facing roof. Um, you know, what are the key things we should be thinking about in terms of looking at sizing our system and, and what size to choose? You need to look at how much energy do you consume in the house? Um, people's energy consumptions are getting greater and greater with TVs. I know you're not running air cons, your house is very efficient, but yep. certainly air conditioning, TVs, computers, they're all running and people's power is continually going up. Yeah, sure. But certainly, you know, oversizing is one of the things we like doing here um, to try and utilise the investment you put into your inverter. Um, so by oversizing as in producing more than you're using or oversizing panels to inverter? Yeah, so oversizing your panels yep. to, your inver to your inverter. So for your place, what we're going to do is we're going to do a three kilowatt solar array mm -hmm. matched to a two and a half kilowatt solar inverter. Right, okay. So that'll still perform? Still perform the same as if we had a three kilowatt inverter on there. Yep. But the benefit and what I love for your place and for everyone else out there is that we've been able to save you a couple of hundred bucks. And, um, you know, in, in terms of giving other people that advice and how they go about sizing, I mean, do you try and recommend that people actually look at their, their demand and how they can be more energy efficient to get their demand down first? Sure. First and foremost, we'll try and reduce the consumption. Yes. But then what we'll do is we'll match the consumption to the solar system's production. Okay. And that's where we... So we'll it's not just the, the size of the system, it's the production. That's right. How it actually works with all the conditions yep. on and, the site. And when okay. it works. So in terms of um, you know, cost for a, for a system like ours, if we're putting in a, a three kilowatt system, what's a typical payback period? From what we've profiled from your yep. place, we're looking at 3.2 years payback. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's great. That's really come down. Yep. Okay, and the embodied energy payback of the, in terms of the energy used to make the panels and the railings and the inverter and all the kit? Yep, sure, we're down at sub two years. That's incredible. Yeah. So it wasn't that long ago, I think they were talking five to seven years payback? That's correct. Yeah, and some of the systems will still have that. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, for someone who's looking at putting in solar panels on their roof, you know, yeah. given all the things that you've, you've sort of taken us through, what would be your, I guess, your, your key take home messages? So do your research, cut down your energy costs, get a right system for your, for your property and your energy profile. Very good. Yeah. Thanks for your time. No worries, Josh. How cool does that look? I'm so stoked that our panels are in 
and we're generating our own solar power. I'm also really glad that we took the time to do our homework and find a good installer and put good quality gear in that will last. Of course, it's not the only form of solar energy we're going to be harnessing. There's more to come just in the next couple of days. Solar hot water systems are fairly common these days, but ours is a little bit special in that it has a roof mounted gas booster. This reduces heat loss from pipe work and evenly distributes hot water around the house, which means less water is wasted waiting for it to heat up. Look, there's another thing that I'm uh, really excited about. I know this sounds a bit nerdy, uh, and that's the data logging. Uh, we've had all the wiring uh, configured so we can track the energy use of all the different circuits in the house, the lighting, the appliances, the pumps for all the different water systems. And we've also got uh, temperature sensors uh, configured uh, right across uh, the house, in the walls, in the slab, in the ceiling. They're wired back to what will be a central data logger here. And that data logger is then plugged into our household uh, smart wiring network so we can put all of that data up on the Josh's House website. So the idea is, is we really want to scrutinise uh, how these homes perform across energy, temperature, water, uh, and make sure that all that information can go out to the community, to industry, so we can learn some lessons from this project. So, uh, you know, for me, um, that's the long-term legacy of this build. So look, to me, you know, designing these houses you know, around the sun in terms of warmth and light and, and you know, power generation. It just makes good sense. It's just crazy that more homes aren't designed that way. Um, you know, and to be able to track that over time, look at the performance, you know, even get the kids involved in, in getting an understanding of, of um, you know, the units of power and how much we're generating, how much we're using. It's just, I think, the way that, that we need to bring up our kids so they understand it. And, uh, you know, that, that's really how we want to, to live our lives. What do you reckon, mate? He's enthused. He's, he's up for it, can't you see? For more details on all of our solar technology choices and loads more information, go to joshshouse.com.au where you can also watch all of the Josh's House episodes and download our free plans. And if you want to see the garden and the houses for yourself, we'll be open as part of Sustainable House Day on September 8. Check our website for more info. Does. What's that? Gives us light when we don't need lights. Very true, that's a good one. And it helps. What? It also helps our plants.